Welcome to Holt Main Sail Rifle Section. We're not going to dwell too much on rifles because I've been told off spending too long with cyber sides. So we're going to power through. I have quite a few beautiful rifles here, but I am limited. So we're going to start with this. A Daniel Fraser and Co. 303 double rifle. You have open sights at 50, flip up 100, and flip up 200. A little gold in lead line there leading to your probably platinum bead sight. The stock is a stunning piece of walnut. Dare I say maybe even too nice for the action. Like this rifle to me screams like it just wants to be used. It's a 303 double. It's an extremely usable caliber worldwide, especially in England and Scotland where this gun was made. Love it, look, look at that safety catch. You got like a bolted safety. A bolted safety is nice. And then you got one of the strangest little red dot in there. I wonder what that's made of. How intentional it is or what is it? I don't know, but it is lovely. That bolted safety is very nice. You have a full trigger guard, a trigger tang there, leading into a little horn grip cap and a wildly exotic looking escutcheon. You have checker panels. It's not to my taste, but it will be to somebody's. Not that it's going to put me off. This is seven to nine thousand. Seven to nine thousand for a Scottish made, and it is. I mean, the rifling is as it feels like it's never been fired. It probably hasn't. Twelve oh six. What this rifle is, which to me is crawling through the mud, leopard crawling in to get your fifty yard shot in a row. I feel like that stock might be a little bit too nice. In fact, for somebody, it will be perfect. I hope that goes to a good home. This is a testament to a man who loved his rifle. This is a Rigby in 270 Winchester. A very unexciting workhorse Rigby. You know, unembellished 270 swing off scope, open sights if necessary hill stalking rifle and as far as i'm aware this rifle belonged to one man all of its life being one of those rifles you can just tell it has been used hard and loved hard the outside the finish has a few marks and a few scrapes but it's it's a sum of marks and scrapes it's got patina if wood can have patina the metal work the bluing is going in certain areas but it's there is no sign of rust it's just been wiped down hard and used probably through brush heather and white grass the gun itself just oozes love and it deserves to have another owner who's going to love it for another 40 or 50 years and just continue this has got a proper legacy gun belongs in the hands of somebody who just has a gun and loves their gun Blaza double 470. You don't see one of those every day. You probably wouldn't want to shoot one of these every day. Look at that with the Jaeger block in the back as well. Tilting block that locks up with the barrel so it doesn't lock up with the action itself. In a 470, I have a feeling that that rifle would hurt to shoot. I don't think anyone will disagree with me on that one. 250 semi smooth bore? Yeah, 250 semi smooth bore. This is actually being sleeved into a 223. Suddenly you've got the world's sweetest Holland and Holland single shot rifle. So it's sleeved and reproved in 223. So you still have the original octagonal with the original open sights. Inside of there, you've got a brand new 223 barrel. So unlike the 250 semi smooth ball that was probably a little bit poorly in terms of accuracy, you now have this, some unpronounceable German scope with a single post sight. And this is in a, that's 1252, a thousand pounds. And that's proper usable history. That is proper usable history. This is a Holland and Holland 375 H&H double rifle. You have obvious flick up sights, much beefier. This is designed to be a workhorse, clearly. If the action is engraved with the most beautiful scroll and bellino animals. Look at that. Those eyes are just perfect. Bit of black death on the bottom. It is just 
stunning. And the, the scroll that surrounds it is is nice. It's not too much. It doesn't detract. And you've got the big boy on the other side there. The safety tang that goes all the way through. Unbelievable quality inletting. Full length trigger guard going into the grip cap. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Estimate of 50 to 70,000, which is, well, it's a quarter of the price it would be new. The tree in the background of that, that is superlative. Quality. You could fall in love with that very easily, so I'm gonna put it down. But well, that is the best of the best. Here's an interesting one, a Heim. A Heim with beautiful Thistle engraving, look at that. It's a little bit different, a bit out of sorts for them. That is a stunning piece of engraving, I mean, look at it. I've never found the action shape on these particularly desirable to my eye, but that engraving is stunning. And then you look at, you've got your red danger sign on the back there. This is a beautifully composed rifle. Look at that case. Beautiful leather right there. Two barrel sets, two scopes, one in 7x65R and one in 375, yeah, 375. There's a 7x65 barrels and they've got that thistle engraving all the way up the quarter rib. Look at those. There's a very, very beautifully engraved gun. What is that? That's lot 1251. A couple of Zeiss Victory HT scopes with it as well. That is a very nice thing. Daniel Fraser & Co, Cromarty, the Black Isle, Scotland. That is a very nice thing. Treble 250, made in 1990. Very nice. I can appreciate black and gold guns when they're done that tastefully. And more importantly, look at the way that back mount skeletonized to take that bolt style from the back there. It's a very interesting piece of kit, the octagonal to round barrel, a little gold pipe around the front. A little bit different. Aged well. Here's one you won't see every day. This is a UK custom shop, 243 tight neck 270. That is a caliber only its mother could love? I don't know, it's a very, it's a different thing. It's not the sort of thing you'll see every day, but it is nicely put together. It's very unique. For what looks quite a chunky rifle, it hefts very well. It's, it's, it's an interesting machine, 1105 PRWW. She's definitely interesting. She's definitely interesting. Two six four Magnum. David Lloyd Pipewell in 264 Magnum. It's an interesting rifle. Gaffer 98 action, rebarreled in 264 Magnum in a strange custom stock. It is bizarre. That is absolutely bizarre. Inherently, it looks, it looks like something from the space age, like something out of a comic book. It's an int just bizarre the sort of thing that belongs in a museum, but it is interesting. So a little bit of research would say that this is a gun built in 1970. It is 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. It's got some style. It, I mean, it, it does fall fully in the bizarre looking gun realm. That's nice, Charles Lancaster. Nothing particularly special, but very nice. I think drawn to the Roebuck engraved on the bottom of whatever this is. A Roy Martin, Dunham on Trent, Newark, Nottinghamshire. Look at that Roebuck. That is a beautiful thing. I mean, it's not wildly exciting, but it is beautiful. Nice rifle. Very nice rifle. This is nice. It's the Precision Rifles of Scotland. This is a 300 Winchester Magnum made in 2014. It's an extremely light rifle. Clearly it's been cerakoted on the barrel, fiberglass stock. You're guaranteed a rifle like this is bedded to perfection. It's got quite a long stock actually, which is interesting. Um, about 15 and a quarter. And the trigger is obviously match graded about three grams and half a feather. That's a very practical stalking rifle for probably people vastly more refined than I, but that is fine. Churchill pump action 2-2. 
That's a very nice thing. Usually when you see these little, well, actually, there's a colt here, there's a colt underneath. When you see these little things, they are utilitarian. <laughs> as utilitarian as they come, at least. This one's had a little bit more, more shine put on it. I've got a coarse checker, but some nice handmade grips. And a slight English finish. EJ Churchill, 8 Agar Street, Strand, London. before Sharky hits me in the head with his camera, uh, is that the world of halts and rifles is vast and varied. There is all sorts from uh, ridiculous, and I say that, these will make somebody very happy. They've got a load of blars, there's a load of other stuff. It's like just precision. There's some long range love, some short range love, and some classic love. Go check it out on halts.com. Anyone can bid, enjoy. There is some true beauty here. It really is. You spend a lot of time lusting. And I know that's bad because lust is a sin, but I don't care. Take care, guys.